Welcome to Physician Academy. Today we have an introduction to acute tubular tubulo interstitial nephritis. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Please share our talks with others. Encourage others to join our site. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube page. As we grow and our community expands, we can offer more uh, services such as test prep and better lectures. So please encourage others to join us. So today's introduction to acute tubulo interstitial nephritis. What a fun thing to talk about. Today's so the summary for as an as this goes is it's a primary injury to the renal tubules and interstitium resulting in decreased renal function. It's usually an acute drug reaction or infection. The chronic form is a genetic or metabolic or obstructive chronic exposure to drugs, herbs or toxins. Simply it's diagnosed by HMP urinalysis and biopsy. Treatment is based on the etiology. So that was a quick overview. Acute interstitial nephritis or acute tubulo interstitial nephritis, ATIN, is a primary injury to the renal tubules with uh, and an interstitium resulting in decreased renal function and sparing of the glomeruli. Important cause of acute renal failure resulting from immune mediated tubulo interstitial injury Initial initiated uh, by medications, infections, and other causes. May be implicated in up to 15% of patients hospitalized for acute renal failure. Clinical features are essentially those of acute renal failure from any cause and apart from a history of new illness or medication exposure, there are no specific history physical examination findings, or laboratory findings that distinguish acute interstitial nephritis from other causes of acute renal failure. There is a classic triad. So this is important for boards. The classic triad is fever, rash, and eosinophilia with, uh, with drug-induced ATIN, or acute tubular interstitial, acute tubulo interstitial nephritis. ATIN is easier to say. Classic findings of fever, rash, and arthralgias, arthralgias may be absent in up to two-thirds of patients. So even though this is the classic triad, most patients won't have it. But you need to think of fever, rash, and eosinophilia. When you see those three, then think of a, a drug-induced ATIN. So the etiology of ATIN the most common one is infection, which is bacterial, staph, strep, yersinia, dif uh, diphtheria, or viral causes like cytomegalovirus, hepatitis C, Epstein-Barr virus, and mumps. Who knew hepatitis C could cause ATIN? Obviously, internists. Systemic diseases or immune disorders like systemic lupus erythematosus, or also SLE, sarcoidosis, and Wagner's granulomatosis. Another cause for is drug exposure. The list is so long it could be any common medication. So a lot of antibiotics that we uh, prescribe to patients can cause ATIN, NSAIDs can cause it, thiazides can cause it, phenytoin, allopurinol, common antibiotics, beta-lactams, cephalosporins, rifampin, Lasix, thiazide diuretics, acyclovir, captopril, my God, the list goes on. So it's just a, a important for us as physicians to be aware of this so that when we're monitoring, that's why a lot of times when we give a new medication, we should be monitoring the, the BMP or the CMP, the basic metabolic panel or the complete metabolic panel, because this is one of the things that you'll note on a patient. You'll see a change in their creatinine. Symptoms. There's often a fever and a rash, or uh, which are characteristic of, of drug-induced, Noct nocturnal urea uh, due to defect in urinary concentration, abdominal pain, weight loss. Peripheral edema and hypertension are uncommon uh, uh, unless renal failure occurs. So diagnosis. A uh, few clinical or routine laboratory findings are specific enough, so these are general. So in diagnosing this, we should do check a urinary sediment for eosinophilia, uh, WBCs and WPC casts, RBCs. We should look for proteinuria, eosinophilia. Remember, that was in the classic triad. Glucosaurea, 
uh, with normal plasma glucose. So if you're noticing a lot of sugar in the urine, but you check a finger stick glucose and it's a normal level, that should be something to think about. Imaging is used to exclude other causes, so bilateral renal enlargement. Eosinophilia does not make or exclude the diagnosis, but the absence of eosinophils makes the diagnosis less likely. So it's a high negative predictive value. Renal biopsy is the gold standard for diagnosis and is needed for definitive diagnosis, but is reserved for the following. Uncertain diagnosis, progressive renal injury, no improvement after causative agent is stopped, and when steroid therapy is considered for treatment. So the treatment for ATIN is the most obvious, stop the agent causing the disease. Clinical improvement is rapid after removal of an offending agent or medication. So it's really key that that's part of the history and physical. You'd ask, did you start any new medications? Have you been to your doctor recently? What are you taking now? And so if this all happened right after starting a new medication, that could be the causative agent. And since the list of causative agents is huge, consider stopping it and see how the patient responds. The only treatment available besides stopping the causative agent, whatever it may be, is to give steroids. But before giving steroids, a renal biopsy would be nice. So this concludes our uh, brief talk on an introduction to acute tubular nephritis. I welcome other physicians who are much more knowledgeable in this to contribute to a lecture to be more specific and more detailed. We'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you for listening and uh, please share our talks with others. Encourage others to join us, like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube page. And remember, as we grow and our community expands, we can offer more services such as test prep and better lectures. We're always looking for people who want to offer more information or better lectures. Thank you.